So you're thinking about moving to the Temecula Valley, but you're wondering about the commutes. How about are the commutes to San Diego, LA, Orange County, uh, the desert? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Hi, Jessica Janung here with Active Realty and the Janung team. And I have Scott Dorman joining me today. So I wanna introduce you guys to him first. We're gonna be talking about commuting and Scott is on our team. He's been on our team for, I think it's been about a year now. Yeah, about a year already. Yeah, so um, he's been on our team for about a year. He's been doing really awesome and he has had to do the San Diego commute. So he's especially going to be talking to us about that commute. That is the most popular commute in our area, the San Diego commute, and in my opinion, it is the worst. <laughs> yes, I agree with so. you 100%. And so, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was doing the San Diego commute uh, every weekday mm -hmm. from standard times from early morning to afternoon. I was going southbound and then northbound in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. The commute in the morning was generally better than the commute in the afternoon. You had, if you left at a certain time, you had an opportunity to beat some of that traffic. So I would leave at about 5.15 in the morning, maybe 5.30 at the latest. And I was commuting to Carlsbad. And so I would go down to Escondido and then take the 78 out west toward Carlsbad. And that commute would take me about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, depending on the traffic. Wow, and was there traffic at that time, at five in the morning? It was, it was pretty heavy, but yeah. it was flowing, I would say, at about 5.15 in the morning, 5.30. Okay. But it would start to pick up pretty quickly by the time six o'clock rolled around. If you left much later, you, you would see some stop and go, some yeah. slowdowns. And so the commute could take up to an hour and a half on really heavy traffic days going to Carlsbad. And that's about the same for going down to San Diego proper as well. Okay, so Scott was commuting actually before he became a real estate agent. He was a teacher, um, which we thought was so awesome. Another fun fact about Scott, he is a former client and we have been trying to recruit him for kind of a long time. So we love that he's a former teacher. I really feel that um, it's important in this job to have the heart of a teacher because we're constantly educating our clients on the market. We work with a lot of first time home buyers, so we need to do a lot of educating there. So I, anyway, so his job in Carlsbad, he was commuting to be a teacher. Um, what was your start time? So my start time was about seven o'clock in the morning. And yeah. so I would get down there about 20 minutes before the, the school day would start okay. and, and just have time to set up and things like that. And then coming home, I would want to leave as quickly as possible. Yeah, let's, well, let's talk about that commute back. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is especially bad, we wanna note, if you are coming north from San Diego, um, it starts early on a Friday or a holiday weekend. Like today, we're filming this on Friday of President's Day weekend, so it's probably going to be worse today. Yeah. So. so I would say that coming home in the afternoon was the worst commute compared to the morning. And mm -hmm. Monday through Wednesday, it was generally okay, about an hour and five minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. And then on Thursday and Friday on any given end of week, it will start to pick up to the point where it takes about an hour and 30 minutes to get home. And then on a three-day weekend, you're looking at up to an hour and 45 minutes. It can, it can get pretty pretty extreme. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, and that's a good thing to note, you know, he was going to Carlsbad, so, and that is the commute to the beach. So you're looking at about an hour, um, no traffic, roughly commuting, um, you know, if you're gonna go to the beach, which is very popular. And I will say um, Saturday morning, <laughs> let's talk about Saturday morning traffic because we're not supposed to have traffic on a weekend, right? Um, well, going south to San Diego, um, we do have pretty bad traffic. A lot of people going down to the beach, going to Mexico. I don't know where they're going, right. but yeah. you're fine if you're going north, but in the morning on Saturdays up until about noon, the, the southbound traffic from Temecula to San Diego is pretty bad. Um, doesn't seem to be bad in the later afternoon. And Sunday, there's like nothing. You're, right. you're smooth sailing on Sunday, but Saturday morning is going southbound. Warning. <laughs> yes. And they do have a couple projects obviously in place to alleviate some of the, the traffic. Uh, there is still in the design phase. It's going to take a little while for these projects to kind of come to fruition. Mm -hmm. But they are in the design phase. They're going to add another exit at the French Valley Parkway going northbound and at the at the interchange there between the 15 and the I-215. Mm -hmm. That should alleviate some of the afternoon traffic on work days and then even on the weekends when traffic gets heavy. Um, hopefully we'll alleviate some of that too, so. We would love to know down below in the comments, let us know how your commute is. How long is it taking, where you're going? Do you have any secret routes? Um, let us know down below in the comments. 
Okay, so the new French Valley exit that hopefully they are going to uh, make progress on very soon. So I do think that I have seen that area carved out over um, off of Murrieta Hot Springs right. by the Aldi. So mm -hmm. it's going to come out pretty far, that exit. Yeah, and it should bypass the actual interchange itself, which mm -hmm. has been causing a lot of the congestion. Because right. what you have in Temecula going northbound with the heavy traffic is three really heavy traffic yeah. exits yeah. Uh, from Winchester, <laughs> Temecula Parkway, and uh, Rancho California Road going northbound. Yeah. That'll be a really great uh, addition. So. Yeah, we need more. There's only three exits in Temecula, so um, they're all pretty congested, quite frankly. And the French Valley one is going to be by Winchester, and that one and Myriad Hot Springs could both use relief. Um, Winchester, in particular, um, is the most northern exit in Temecula, and they have the mall there. They jammed a Costco in the corner. You know, Trader Joe's, you, you name it. Everything is, is off of Winchester. Yeah, and it's also your main thoroughfare into Winchester, where a lot of these these homes are that we've been selling to our clients. Yeah. They, they they have to travel on Winchester from the freeway just to get out to their house. That's so true. this will alleviate some of that. Yeah, that definitely. Congestion. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe Chris, my husband, um, won't be so panicked about going down to Winchester Road because every time I'm going to go do something down there, he's like, ooh, the one on Winchester? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's very Yeah, we, we try and avoid it. Yes, <laughs> Take to be heads. avoided at all costs. <laughs> but there's so much stuff there that you can't really avoid it um, yeah. often. And that's so. the trade-off for the commute really is the convenience, right? So yes. whether you're on Temecula Parkway or you're on Winchester, you have access to so many different businesses, shops shopping, restaurants, yeah. and you that's really the trade-off for that is access yeah. and convenience. You, yeah. It's great. And if you can plan around um, the traffic-y times, the traffic is not bad around here at all. Like, I go places all the time in the morning up to about 2 o'clock, and you're not going to have any problems getting around. Yeah. Timing is everything. Yes. That's my six-year-old. <laughs> okay, distances to airports. I get that question very often from clients. Um, where's the closest airport? So we have several airports within an hour to two hours in our area, but the most common are going to be um, San Diego and Ontario. So, right. Um, I have a personal preference. So San Diego, it's much uh, a much more beautiful drive, um, no traffic. You can easily get down there in an hour, sometimes 45 minutes, it's all downhill. Um, but my personal preference is Ontario. So even though they're about equal distance, um, Ontario is much less drama. I feel like you can park right across the street from the terminal, walk in. Yes. Um, so you don't get um, the beautiful downtown San Diego scenery, but it's a lot easier to get in and out of. Yes, I agree. And, and like we said before, timing is everything. So paying attention yes. to the rush hour traffic, whether it be in the afternoon or in the morning, mm -hmm. timing your flights just right, those will be your, your quickest access to airports. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, if you're going to San Diego, you might have to park off-site. That's not yes. uncommon. You, you know, rent a spot in one of those lots, and then they shuttle you over. Ontario, you do not have to deal with that. So other airports in our area, so in Santa Ana and Orange County, you've got Long Beach Airport. I love that airport. I don't know, I haven't flown out of there in a really long time, but they literally have like the stairs that you roll up, like it's just super small. So that one's great. And then LAX, that's your biggest airport in the area. And that is probably like a one and a half to two hour drive. Yeah, with no say? traffic. With no traffic. So that's LA all the way by the coast. So yeah, you want to plan a lot of time to get to LAX. That, that's where most of your international flights are going to be and your direct flights. So that is a common airport to go out of if you're traveling internationally. And I do know, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, um, but the Orange County, LA commuting, there's a lot of toll roads now. So I yes. would definitely invest in the, the fast track yes. um, so that you can hop on those toll roads. I know those help. I don't know the exact routes. Yeah, and when you are putting in your, your coordinates or your destination in your GPS, just make sure that you have either check the toll roads so that it's unchecked or just check your, your itinerary to make sure that you don't end up on a toll road on accident. So. Yes, that has happened to me. Yes, and me Because <laughs> they've been changing where like a lot of them now require the fast pass. Like you, um, I don't think there's like really toll booths like there used to right. be. It used to be, you know, you throw money in the it's toll. It's a toll scanner that. that you go underneath and it will yeah. take a picture of your license plate or scan yeah. your fast track pass. Yeah. So I've so. definitely gotten a ticket about that. <laughs> Um, cause yeah, if you don't have the fast pass and you're going through and there's no toll booth, you're going to get charged. Yeah. Cause Chris, this is more just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, for Chris, for people who are in Chris's mindset where he would rather 
it take longer, but he's moving. Yes. Then, so he'd rather get off on side too. streets. Yeah. But here, you're just better off on the freeway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, that's my personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to settle this once and for all. <laughs> um, again, here, I, I differ with Chris, so we're going we're gonna to have, you're going to be the mediator yes. here. You're, he's going to be the tiebreaker. <laughs> uh, my personal opinion is that when there is traffic um, in our area, that you're still better off to take the freeway versus Chris. He will take longer taking the side streets and, you know, you're hitting all these signals and I think it's going to take as long or longer than just sticking it out on the freeway. <laughs> yeah. And, and I've been known to do exactly what Chris does, where I do take the back streets to, <laughs> to avoid the traffic. I've done it. If you have the Waze app, that's a really helpful app to help you navigate the side streets. But kind does of... it take longer? <laughs> <laughs> it might take a little bit longer, but you're still moving. So if that's important to you it, by a couple minutes. Yeah. You, so you do have some alternative options, yes. but I say take the freeway, or if you're like Scott and Chris, um, you can keep moving and hit a bunch of signals and take a little bit longer. <laughs> Speaking of Chris, he wanted me to remind you, because I haven't talked about this in quite a while, but if you are considering moving to our area, we do have a free relocation guide that's down below in the description, and it's available for immediate download. Feel free to check that out. A little side note briefly on Temecula versus Murrieta and the commute to San Diego, because that's our most popular commute. Uh, my personal opinion, and you'll have to let me know what you think because Chris kind of differs with me on this, but uh, people, they always have in their mind that they want to live in Temecula because it's the closest to San Diego. Temecula is actually the most southern city in Riverside County. Um, and then it starts Fallbrook, which is San Diego County. So it's right on the San Diego County border. And people always think that um, Temecula, the commute is going to be a lot less than if you live in Murrieta, which is just north of Temecula. But my personal opinion is that if you are near a freeway in Murrieta, that it's pretty similar to most Temecula communities because a lot of Temecula communities are pretty far east. Yes, and I agree with you on that. I think it really depends on where you're living in Temecula. Mm -hmm. If you're living farther out, uh, to the east, obviously, it's going to take longer to get to the freeway, up to 10 mm -hmm. minutes sometimes. And if it's yeah. really congested on Temecula Parkway, for example, in South Temecula, mm -hmm. uh, it could take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely up in Marietta, you have the two freeways that run through the city. And so it's a lot, you have access to the, yes. to the freeways. Yeah, so. much uh, easier freeway access yeah. from a lot of Marietta neighborhoods than Temecula. So. Right. Um, a lot of popular Temecula neighborhoods are east, you know, Morgan Hill, Crown Hill, yes. um, Chardonnay Hills, Vintage Hills, Somers Bend, very popular new construction community, pretty far from the freeway, I yes. will say. Yes, and I agree. <laughs> Thank you so much, Scott, for helping us make this video. He's going to be helping us make more videos in the future, and I'm very excited about that. Yeah, me too. I love being on the team. Thank you so much, Jessica. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. 